Acts chapter 22. I'll read for you Matthew chapter 10. Let's go ahead and pray real fast. Lord, uh, thank you so much for this day. Thank you, Lord, so much that uh, we can come here and listen to your word pre preached by all these men. Lord, I pray that you would just uh, fill me up with your spirit, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, the title of my sermon is Wise as Serpents. Wise as Serpents. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, it says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And, you know, I remember the first time I ever read this, I really was thinking about that. I'm like, wise as serpents. I mean, like, who would ever, who would ever, you know, consider a serpent to be like wise? Because, I mean, we think of a serpent as like the devil, you know? And, um, I filed that away, and then years later, as I'm re as I'm studying up on uh, kind of the King James only controversy and everything, I was actually reading a bunch of stuff written by some of the guys that were on the translation committee, and one of them was talking about wise as serpents, and apparently there was quite the kerfuffle over it, over over what this meant, and and one of the conclusions that that at least that he came to, and I, I think it's a great one. Uh, is that he said, you know, that he considered serpents to be wise because of their ability to accomplish their goals in the world. In spite of all the odds stacked against uh, snakes, they're able to live, eat, and multiply. And if you really think about it, it's true. Snakes, they crawl on the ground. You know, they, they, they're, they're really very vulnerable. Um, and, and yet they're kind of single-minded in what they do. And, and, you know, for the most part, uh, snakes leave you alone. I mean, they're they're not very aggressive. They don't attack. Um, if, if you're you're more likely to scare off a snake than for it to like, and and that's part of their instinct to live. Their instinct to to do what they what they want to do. And so so I, I thought about that and I said I I really think that that might be what it is. So I'm going to show you. Um, they're they're specifically Paul. Three things that Paul did that were definitely wise as a serpent in his in his ministry. You're in Acts chapter 22. Look at verse 25, and it says, "And this is when he's in Jerusalem, and and he's being persecuted, and you know, and and this is something I really think we need to do as soul winners is that we really need to be wise in what we're doing. I think I think a lot of times we can we can you know get this kind of really aggressive streak where it's like, hey. No, I'm not soliciting. What are you talking about? I'm not selling anything. I mean, and you can really kind of, you can really kind of, kind of bow up and, and get aggressive. And, and I really don't think that's a good idea. And I don't think that's very wise because we're here to accomplish a goal. Okay. The goal is to evangelize. All right. And so that's what we need to focus on. And you need to put any, anything that's petty or anything that you, you know, oh, this guy slighted me or whatever. You need to put that aside and focus on the fact that we're here to get people saved. So in Acts chapter 22, starting in verse 25, and it says, As they bound him in, with thongs, Paul said in the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? When the centurion heard that, he went and told his, the chief captain, saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. Then the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, Yea. And the chief captain answered, With a great sum of I obtained this freedom. And Paul said, But I was free born. Then straightway they departed from him, which should have examined him. And the chief captain also was afraid after he knew that he was a Roman and because he had bound him. Now, this is a really good example. Paul didn't fight back. He didn't try and get out of it. He, 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 but what did he do? He was wise about it. He used the fact that he was a Roman citizen to literally scare this guy. In saying, "Hey, I don't want to do that," and and we have the we have that ability today, you know. I mean, we we have the First Amendment. The First Amendment says that we are free to practice our religion, and we need to use that tool, but in a way that's wise, you know. We're not going to just sit there and scream at people. I mean, uh, something I've done is I've basically I've had people that come out and, oh, you need to get out of here, and it's like, oh, have a nice day, and then I'll turn around and kind of walk off and wait for them to go back to their couch. And then start on the other end of the apartment complex, and I'm I and if they come out and you know do it again, I've never had any of them come back out because they're sitting on their couch eating potato chips or whatever. But but you know that that that's more wise than you just sitting there yelling at them or trying to get out of it. 
Uh, Acts 23, verse 23. This is when he is brought before the high priest, Ananias, uh, and, and he, he's, he commands him to be smote on the mouth. Then Paul said unto him, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall, for, for smitest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law. Again, he's bringing up the law. He's saying, hey, you're not doing the right thing. But, you know, again, is Paul fighting it? Is he like gnashing at him and spitting on him and punching him? No, he's not. Uh, and they and they stood by and said, revilest thou God's high priest? Then said Paul, I, I wist not, brethren, that he was the high priest, for it is written, thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. Hey, you know what? We can wish Joe Biden is not the president, you know, uh, but that doesn't mean we're going to try and act actively physically do something about it, uh, just like Paul didn't. But when Paul perceived that that one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, of the hope of the resurrection of the dead, I am called into question. And when he had said, the, said this, he rose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So what he's doing is he's turning these two people, two groups of people against each other. It, because before they were all against Paul. And then he's like, hey, wait a minute, I can get these guys to fight amongst themselves. And that's something that we can do too, you know? And, and uh, th this always comes up with like Mormons and cults and other things like that. You know, you might have someone who maybe, maybe they've got an issue with those with, and maybe you're sewing it at the door and someone's talking about a cult or something like that. And you can be like, yeah, yeah, I can't stand them either. And then like show them somewhere where they're just, you know, totally wrong. You know, you can, you can, you can pit people against each other and and I, I I love the way Paul does that here because because he's just he's just basically saying, hey, I'm I, I'm I'm a Pharisee and and those guys are Sadducees and I'm being persecuted because I'm a Pharisee. And if you really think about it, he was that was one of the things that he was persecuted for because he believed in the resurrection. Um, so that's another example where where you can where you can kind of be wise as a serpent in that regard. Uh, last one is Acts 17 verse 20. It says, "For thou bringest to certain strange things to our ears, we would know therefore what these things mean." And this is when he's on Mars Hill and he's talking to the Athenians, and they they, they just want to know everything. It says, "For all the Athenians and strangers which were spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear." some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, ye men of Athens, I perceive in all things you're too superstitious. For as I passed by and behold your devotion, I found an, alt an altar with this inscription to the unknown God uh, uh, on, on who, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. And this really reminds me of, there, there are a lot of guys out there that won't want to talk. But, but maybe they'll hear a Bible verse. Maybe they're a younger guy. I, I still remember one time there was this gentleman who didn't want to hear what I had to say, but he had, he had a bumper sticker for Alex Jones. And I was like, New World Order. And I started talking to him about that. And I talked with him about that, told him about different Bible versions. I was able to walk that right back around to the gospel and say, hey, it's great that you want to, that you want to know what the Word of God is. Let me show you what the word of God says so you can know that you're going to heaven. So we can use that. And that, that's something that you see Paul doing in a very subtle way, saying, hey, I'm going to take something that they're using that's carnal and I'm going to turn it spiritual. And and I really like that example. And that's another way that we can be wise as serpents. And go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19. And I'll just read it for you real fast. For though I be free from all men, Yet have I made myself a servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became a Jew, that I might gain the Jews, to them that are under the law as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law, to them that are without the law as without the law, being not without law to God, uh, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without the law. To the weak I became weak, that I might gain the weak, I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. And that's just Paul saying, hey, I'm going to meet them on their level. I'm going to talk to them about, you know, what they're interested in, where they're coming from. 
and and I'm going to work it around to the gospel. And obviously he puts that caveat saying, hey, I'm under the law of Christ. You know, I'm not going to do anything that's against the word of God to do that. But it is something that we need to be conscious of. We need to make sure that we're putting ourselves in their shoes, taking ourselves down to their level. So those are three ways that as soul winners and just as men, we can be a wise as a serpent to get that goal accomplished. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you, Lord, so much that uh, we have this awesome church, Lord. I pray that you would just continue to bless it, Lord, and that you would put a hedge of protection around it and that you would fill the uh, next man who's coming up to preach with your spirit, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.